right. Uh, Albert Hainsworth doesn't want to play uh, nose tackle. Uh, he doesn't want to practice with the team. Uh, he had to get shoveled off the pavement last year. Numerous all, times. Yeah, all this is stuff that we've... Uh, I mean, these, there's some new comments now and some new situations with this team. Mike Shanahan has said that he wants him there. Albert Hainsworth has said no. Um, we're going to get to some of your calls on this. If you'd like to get on now and uh, get on hold, so you make sure you get in. 800-636-1067. But first, let's get... Uh, Let's see what you got to say, Var. Yeah, well, thank you. Uh, take it from there. Been looking forward to it all day. <laughs> all right, so this is my thing. This is my take on this. You're first and foremost. You're coming off of a four and twelve season. You were supposed to be you. Speaking of you, Albert Hainsworth, were supposed to be the key cog in resurrecting uh, a team that should have been playoff bound. When they brought you here, that was what the the huge contract was for. That was what all the hoopla was about. Right. Various news outlets, everybody pumped up, sized about Albert Hainsworth being added to the Washington Redskins team. When you come, when you come to a team, this is. I want to keep this. I want to be careful to make sure that this is. Present it in in the way that a player would be presenting this. So this would be what what we're listening to now. Is if I had a relationship, the only reason why I'm I'm stating it on my show as opposed to him personally is I don't know him, and and so instead of this being a conversation between me and Albert Hainsworth, this is a conversation to to him through through this radio show. Mm -hmm. That's what this is. And what I would tell him is if if your legacy and and if your reputation means means the world to you, if if your your family name, if your teammates, if your teammates mean the world to you, then you don't need to hear Mike Shanahan say, I disagree with you going with your guy to go train. You don't, you don't have to hear that. So here's the thing. You say you didn't like the way the defense was, was played last year. You said you were used incorrectly. You didn't like the way you were used. Okay, he's gone now. Before you even get started with the season or anything else, now you're already making comments that you're not a nose guard and this isn't a defense that you want to be in as well. Your voice is heard. And obviously it's respected enough because it commands attention where we're talking about it, people are talking about it. This has been made major news today. What I'm saying to you right now is this should be this should sit on you as a major disappointment in your decision making because someone who has the ability to be in a locker room and help be a part of the transformation of going from a four and twelve mentality to a winning mentality, if that transformation that takes place takes place during this offseason then how can you as a leader look at those guys in their face? I don't care if you come in 20 pounds lighter and in shape and can run for 20 days upon end, like just straight through. I don't care if you come in, like you said, and become the defensive MVP of the NFL or go to another Pro Bowl. I don't, I don't, I don't care about that. What I care about is the fact that you are an individual that has been placed on a team and maybe not on your own will or your own choice, but due to the fact of how you play the game and due to your contract and how people view you, your worth says that you should be more, more involved in the development of this new mentality and this new era a part of this team. You have a new head coach. You have, you have a new strength coach so i don't want to hear the excuse why well, i was here last year and i'm not i wasn't strong well quite frankly last year i don't even know if those strength coaches had a fair opportunity to train you guys 
to begin with. It's a shame that they would lose their jobs and, and a Jim Zorn and the rest of the coaches that lost their jobs would lose their jobs for the simple fact that they had no respect reciprocated back to them from their players. So so what where that leads me to right now is how how in a in a sport, in a game, I can recall the times where on Saturdays we would run in State College, we would run five miles. Five miles was our, our campus run on Saturdays. And I could remember 100-plus players running for five miles. And and the guys that would finish early would be standing there clapping as the guys came in and different things like that. And you know what we did when we were done running? Okay. We brought it up. We hugged. We looked at each other. We were sweating. Cats was cramping. Cats were tired. Dog tired. Nobody could leave. That was mandatory? <laughs> no. It was voluntary, huh? Voluntary campus run. Interesting. Nobody would leave that place until the last man came running across that finish line. That could have been almost uh, upwards of an hour from the time that the first person finished that race. How old are you guys, you think, back then? <sighs> what? 20s? Late? Er, early early 20s? Late teens. Late teens? Kids. Okay. So not I'm a, looking not at... a grown man is what I'm saying. I'm looking at this. We're looking at each other. And you're in the weight room. And you know what? When I'm lifting that weight, sometimes I got that last two reps or that last rep because of the energy that i felt from my teammates sometimes they got that extra weight that extra rep in and got things done because of the energy they felt from their teammates